Agents, how's it going? Logan JYA here, and we got the next Spiral build, this one being Spiral Horus, which our friend on Facebook here was bringing a lot of attention to after doing pretty well at a regional with it. I gotta give a huge shout out to my friend Brahim and Yoke Man. they were helping me put this build together, and I think we've made it even better, even more consistent for the current format. So if you, like me, are a fan of the Spirals, well look no further for what could be an ideal build that's capable of taking out a Locals, a Regionals, or maybe even a YCS. Well, let's find out together. Hello secret agents, it's time for a Spiral update. And again, I gotta give a huge shout out to this dude who ended up going at a Regional with the Spiral Horus build. It was definitely inspirational, although I wasn't a huge fan of his list. But my friends, Brahim, Yokeman, and I, we came together, we got this insane Spiral Horus build for you. And I think this one's just a little bit more consistent. Let me know what you would do differently, as always, in the comments down below. Without further ado, let's jump in. All right guys, monster lineup, start things off. Triple copies of the quick fix, and the monster lineup I'm flagging right now is reduced a little bit, and you're gonna see why as we go through. But we got, these ones will never change, our machine dupable targets, triple copies of the quick fix, Triple copies of the drone, one copy of Last Resort, uh, searchable off of your quick fix and equipable to your sleeper. And then we're only doing one copy of Super Agent and one copy of Tough. Now this was a little bit hard for me to swallow at first. I feel like normally you wanna play more copies of Super Agent because it plus drones facilitates your full combo, but you're gonna find as you play this build that you are more oftentimes than not going to stray from the traditional path when going for your combo lines. And it plays a little bit more like a traditional build of Spiral, as if Master Plan was still legal, or like something you would see on Master Duel. But yeah, cut these down to the bare minimums. If anything, they're gonna be bricks clogging up your hand. You will see that it's far more important for us to reach for the level ones. These are more so going second cards, if anything. But there's no way in heck we're cutting them completely. Moving on, we invoked its name earlier. One copy of the Spiral Sleeper, the most powerful end board piece that Spiral is able to put up. And that is it for the main deck Spirals. Moving on to the next engine needs no introduction, the Horus Monsters. Not my idea, but it was a good one. I think the main value that these guys add in outside of the consistency, the huge bodies, the rank eights, is the discard outlet. I actually think it's very helpful to have a secondary discard outlet with the help of the Horus Monsters and the King Sarcophagus because it helps you put quick fix in grave or other spiral monsters you can summon back off of big red. It gives you more avenues to get into your double helix. But then we follow it up with the one monkey that always ends up in hand. Trust me, he's gonna find a way in there for you too. You're gonna see him more often than you'd like to. And that's it for the horse. Next, I'm only playing two copies of the Magician's Souls. Frankly, I'd probably be playing three if I had three. We've got ways to search this guy too, but two is plenty, and of course your target to send off of this is your big Horus Yemseti, since Master Plan doesn't exist. But Konami, do me a favor, legalize our friend Master Plan, and everyone join me in the comments advocating for Master Plan's legalization. We gotta see it ASAP. And then the last monster we play in the main deck, one copy of the Therion King Regulus. This guy takes on new meaning in this build because he's easier to get to than ever. Now we're into the spells, triple copies of the Spiral Resort. This is probably the best card in the deck if you want me to be honest with the free search and the targeting protection. You want to see this as fast as possible. It's what's going to help insulate your plays going first or second. And then of course we play one copy of Terraforming to search it. Next a little bit more Spiral goodness. Shout out Ricky. We got two of the red cars. And then the most powerful spell card in the deck outside of the field spell is definitely our machine duplication. Especially when you're ripping this off of a quick fix. And that's one thing that's an added benefit of the consistency of this build. You're more likely to see your power cards. You have more ways to draw into them. And when you get off these combos, it's so hard for you to lose. Moving on, two copies of Where Art Thou to search out any of your level ones, whether you start off with a Magician's Souls or a Quick Fix, this can help you get to the other side. But I will flag that this doesn't really help you facilitate combos in those situations, unless again, you have something like a Machine Duplication and you're starting off with the Magician's Souls, this can get you into the Quick Fix to combo off that way. But other times, if you're just starting things off with a drone, perhaps, and you have Where Art Thou, Getting a quick fix there isn't going to put you back into a full combo situation, so you're going to have to look at your entire hand and figure out how you best want to navigate to your ideal end board. 
Now this one's no surprise since we're playing the Horus Monsters. We'll play two copies of the King Sarcophagus. This is a small Horus package. It's the better way. I think I made a mistake back in the day when I did the bigger Horus package in the Orcus build. It was not the way. Honestly, we always want to keep it as slim and cut down as possible to avoid bricking. So the two and the four is enough for me. Next, the mandatory one copy of Ghost Trick Shop Monster Reborn for your Ghost Trick combo. Oh, did I just say it? Monster Reborn as well. We're playing this one card as well. Huge shout out to Brahim. This was his idea. And since we're pitching so many powerful cards in the graveyard, we are able to summon them back for free, whether they be as extenders, link fodder, whatever you need it to be. Monster Reborn is your guy. One for one, summon out quick fix, full combo. One called by the grave, sacked by the grave. We don't like hand traps, especially not droll. And then finally, triple copies of Forbidden Droplets as the last spell that we're playing, our hard going second option. And one thing that I adjusted as well, this is the best thing we can do, by the way, as a uh, card that you can see in hand going second for winning in this current format. Honestly, I think it's pretty undeniable Droplet is the way to go because it just stops the most things. There are so many problems that you can get hit with that Droplets just takes care of, whether it be the Centurions, the Brandids, the Snake Eyes, Droplets is going to be able to help you out. And I am also playing two copies of Infinite Impermanence as well. Now, in our original build, you would play one additional Magician Souls and one additional Where Art Thou for added consistency in these two slots. But I wanted to bump up the amount of going second cards that we have while supplementing for the cards that I didn't have for the in-person build. And then the last card that we play entirely is the Spiral Gear Utility Wire. This is another thing for your going first combo searchable off of Quick Fix. And it is Phoenix Wing Wing Blast, which is really, really good when you think about the fact that you're playing Spirals and knowing what the top card of your opponent's deck is, is a core part of your strategy. So that's everything for this main deck, but let's move on to the extra. And to start things off, don't forget to check out the link in the description to get your Logan JY Field Centers. Extra deck, starting things off with the monsters, we've got our boy Double Helix, just a one of this time. Unfortunately, we gotta cut him back to one. You're gonna see why this extra deck is jam-packed with different monsters that we need to play. So unfortunately, we had to move Double Helix back down to one, but that's okay. You are able to recycle him with your drones effect engraved. Never forget about that. Not only can it bring back regular Super Agent or Tough back to your hand, but you can also put Double Helix back into your extra if you need access to it one more time. Next, we got the one copy of the Relinquished Anima, Mr. Suck. We play so many level ones, and you're going to be using him all the time. R.I.P. Link Karibo. One copy of the IP Masquerina to tag out into whatever Link monsters you need. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree with me. Do you think that this card is going to get banned? Let me know. Do you agree or disagree? I'm a little concerned, guys. I'm thinking maybe she might be going. But hey, that's just my prediction. I want to know what you think. Then, without a doubt, we got her more expensive cousin, the SP Little Knight, for removal. And then finally, one more that could be on the chopping block, Mrs. Apollosa, or the bow of the goddess. She's taking care of business, negating all those monster effects. This deck puts up boards of six, to seven, to eight, to nine interruptions. I kid you not. And that is through hand traps while playing Cautious of Nibiru. And Apo is one of those things that gives you two to three to four of them for pretty much free. That's it for the links. I'm going to move on to the XYZs, but before I do, I just want to say a quick shout out. This isn't in the extra deck, so for the person who's about to comment 16 card extra deck, I'm going to let you know right now this isn't in it, but I want to give a shout out to Celine. I'm not playing this card right now, and the reason why I'm not playing it is because I don't really think it provides much value as like, what are you going into next after this? Yes, you can do it to get a quick Apollosa, but I find myself not struggling to summon Apo while comboing with this deck. So I know this card is insanely powerful. It's so easy to resolve. And maybe if I was playing Axis Code Talker, I would definitely be playing this as well. But right now I'm choosing not to play Celine, but let me know if you would do that differently. All right. Now we'll move into the XYZs. First and foremost, we got the Sylvan Princess Sprite, one of your key rank ones, because all of your rank ones will reset your quick fix. And this one can give you a free card off the top of the deck if it's a spell or trap. Now, another important thing, search all the monsters you can out of your deck before going for the Princess Sprite to really guarantee that you're going to hit a playable card. The amount of times that I've deck thinned out all of the drones, all of the Msetis, all of the quick fixes, and made it so I was basically guaranteed a free draw is, it's almost every time. 
and then you get some of the most filthy draws as well. You can get things like Monster Reborn off the top, or a King Sark if you didn't have access to the engine earlier, maybe a Terraforming or a Field Spell, or even a Machine Dupe. This card is crazy. Moving on, we've got one copy of the Lyralusk Assembled Nightingale because this is your out to the Ten Pies. You know we don't like that deck. I'm sure you've seen the videos we put up recently. Even when we're giving it props, we're also taking a dump on it. And this is one way that Spiral is able to take a dump on it because when you resolve its effects, you're not taking the battle damage. Another cool thing about this card is a great Zeus Facilitator, okay? So if you're playing with level one monsters, trying to navigate through a board, one thing you can always do to catch your opponent off guard, a tricky monster out, throw this guy up, go in, attack directly, main phase two, make that big Zeus and send everything away. Moving on, we got the Ghost Trick Package, one copy of the Dullahand, he is your Link 1 enabler, and he also has the great effect where he adds back the spell card during your combo so you can pitch it for quick fix more often. I know I didn't do that in the last combo tutorial, thank you to everyone who reminded me of that. Yes, you absolutely can because it is being sent to grave. It's not sent from field to grave, it's just whenever it's sent to the grave, you trigger this effect and get to add back that spell for free, more free discard fodder. And then of course, mandatory, you gotta play the two Angels of Mischief to go along with the package, because this is what searches off your shot and is your other uh, rank four to go into the Utopic Future, and then eventually into the Draco Future, which is your negate, your end board piece, the tower's monster that's hard to out. Now moving on to our final X Seeds. This one's a little contentious. I'm not sure how I feel about this guy. To play around to Biru, when we open full combo anyway, the logic was, okay, I'm gonna play Photon Lord as our first card. And then the other option, again, shout out Brahim and the original guy who did this list. I, he might have been playing this as well, but he's playing Sargus as well and hard summoning this to search out your Regulus. That is the other crazy thing that you can do with your horse monsters in this build. But here's the thing that's obviously absent right now. I'm not playing the Vampire Queen or uh, Vampire Lord, whatever her name is. Uh, I'm partially thinking that since these two can kind of do the same thing, the only issue is you have to see a machine or a machine you put in your graveyard to make the Regulus live, and sometimes that just won't be happening. Um, so you want the Photon Lord as your backup plan or your end board piece. It's tricky, but then again, I also think about how if you play the Vampire, then you mill something like a Quick Fix. So even if you only open with the Horus engine, but you hit Quick Fix, you search drones, you normal summon it, and you're now full comboing into Spiral, I want to play the Vampire as well. So if you see another slot that we could cut to make room for it, let me know. The one downside to the Vampire all flag is that we don't have a lot of cards that we want to mill, and if we are doing this early in our plays, we have the potential of milling combo pieces. So I'm talking about Sleeper, I'm talking about Last Resort, all these cards that you necessarily don't want to put into the grave and you don't have an easy time of recycling, yeah, we're running the risk that we're going to mill those. So that's the downside of the card as well. You could keep the package to this and try and function within the engine using this just to get your Regulus or this to put up your uh, safety net. It's tricky. But let me know what you guys think is better. Do we have it right right now? Should we switch it out and play the Vampire? You let me know. All right, moving on. The last card in the extra deck is Big Daddy Zeus. Yes, he's still here. He's still sending boards. Of course he's got it. He's got a job to do. It's to send boards, so we're playing Zeus as well. All right, that's everything for the extra deck to bring this profile to a close. And a quick reminder, don't forget, if you want to see combos, you want to see gameplay, come on over to the stream. Link in the description down below. You can see it all happen live. And let me know in the comments if you want a combo tutorial with this build. All right, side deck, triple copies of Ash, because Brandon's a scary matchup. I'm just getting used to sticking this card somewhere in most builds that I'm playing, especially since there's a big branded representation in my area. Next one, oh, this is funny, we got the commons rocking and rolling with the triple copies of the Dark Ruler No More. So my idea here is that we don't have a lot of room for going second cards in this build. I want things that are going to blank out all of the interruptions at once. I'm not seeing a lot of people playing Dark Ruler, and yes, there are a lot of builds that are able to put up a Spell or Trap Omni Negate, or have another form of interruption that plays around a blanket negate like Dark Ruler. Like, for example, putting up their locks in the standby phase, so they do play around this card. But there are a lot of other decks that don't do that. And even against Snake Eyes, this is relatively impactful. Against Ubel, this is relatively impactful. So I thought Dark Ruler was a good, low investment, high impact card. 
Now for when we're going first, we got triple copies of the talent. You already know what this card does. Three different effects of cards that used to be banned. It's exclusively reactionary, so you want to bring it in when you're going first and you anticipate getting hand traps. Simple as that. It also can be a decent going second tool in certain matchups. The ones that come to mind for me, tier elements, it's pretty good at breaking boards. There are other ones. Orc is not terrible, you know, where you know they're going to be using monster effects and you can proc this card guaranteed to resolve it. Yeah, not bad, not bad. But overall, we know what it's in here for. It's a hard going first card, but it has going second utility as well. Spell and Trap removal lineup. Again, I tell you guys this almost every time now. Double Cosmic and Harpies, this is just my golden ratio. This is what I keep it as. So I'm ready for those back row matchups, those floodgates, X, Y, and Z. And then the last thing we're doing, and you guys might remember this from my last spiral build, I put it in the side deck now. We've got a mini thrust package with one change of heart, one evenly matched, and then one of the thrusts to round out the entire side deck. Yeah, this is a little techy, it's a little cheesy. You could of course change these ratios up, but this is for diversity of coverage. And uh, again, Everyone knows how much I love Thrust in Spiral because it fills in gaps. It can be engine, it can be board breaking, whatever you need it to be. Unfortunately, it just tends to be better when you're going second because you're not going to get bestialed necessarily and really you are trying to play around that nib. Even if you eat the nib and then you got the Thrust, yeah, that is pretty good, but we rather avoid it in the first place. Regardless, that is everything, my friends, for this Spiral Horus deck profile. If you guys want to see the combos, check out the link to the stream down below. We might even have some highlights going up as shorts over the next few weeks. And if you want to see a dedicated, exclusive, secret agent tutorial, well, agents, you got to let me know in the comments down below, and we'll make it happen. That's everything I got today, folks. Logan JYA signing off. Have a great day, and we'll see you beautiful people later. Peace.